mathematicians. Yeah. <laughs> they're eating dinner right now, so yeah, they're a little busy. Okay, so uh, this is for the problem solving, um, and I'm Maria. Here is Lori, and we'll talk about dreams. I want to ask you, what are your dreams about children and mathematics? Um, I think the first thing I was thinking was really that I want them to have a relationship with math that's um, not uh, with without any anxiety, and that's really just natural, you know, that they see math as more of just an extension of their normal life rather than something that they sit down and have to do with problems and then put it away and then not see that it's actually connected to their everyday activities. Um, so that's the first thing. And then, um, yeah, I think for me, when I was growing up, I think I, even though I was okay in math or good in math, I felt like I wasn't a superstar in math. And I felt like I had to be a superstar in math to actually study math. And I want the kids to understand that they don't need to be that way, that, um, that, you know, to just kind of learn about problem solving at an earlier age, rather than it be just part of algebra or something in high school, if that makes sense. So. Okay. So you want math to be uh more natural in the life and for everybody that's what I hear that you don't have to be a mathematician or a superstar to to enjoy it or to use right. it mm -hmm. okay so how do you go about that dream so far well so far uh, you know we homeschool so I'm trying to work with curriculum that is not just worksheets, uh, that also includes word problems at an earlier age. Um, we use manipulatives so that it's more hands-on. And then I've been reading through some math blogs, um, and one of our favorite activities actually is this bedtime math blog, and my kids just love it. They love doing, you know, reading through, and we, there was one on um, the Seattle Public Library had this domino that they made out of books, and they loved watching that, and then we did problems after that, that, that the blog has, and then we also do these math stories, which I think I also read on um, one of the homeschool blog, uh, homeschool math blogs, but they come up with their own little, it's, you know, they create a bedtime story and then they have to have a math problem incorporated in it. And it's just been the, just so much fun to see them come up with these little stories and, and enjoy it. So that's, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> so the kids make up their own? Is it? Yeah, I mean, it's just like creating their own bedtime story. There has to be some math problem involved and it can be simple. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, really complicated, but they... I just enjoy that. So, well, simple is uh, the big thing for you. You say it because it tells them they can do it however they want, right? Right. 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 Okay. So and so the joy. What is the joy for them? You think is it the creating things, the choosing things? What do they like there? You know, I think that they enjoy creating things. I think they like that there's really, when they create their own story, there's no really wrong answer. Um, I think they've also enjoyed some of these, the bedtime math problems are just things that they're really just seem kind of fascinating to them. Um, the the dominoes, I mean, after we finished the domino story, they went out and took all the books out of the bookcase <laughs> and had to do it themselves, you know, and that wasn't necessarily, you know, maybe math related, but it was problem solving and it was something that they felt like they could accomplish something. And I, that was something I really enjoyed with math is I felt like you could sit down and kind of attack a problem and usually come up with a solution and you might have to go to bed and wake up the next day and figure it out. But you know, life doesn't always have a solution and it's kind of nice to be able to figure out a problem. So um, they've enjoyed that too, that kind of satisfaction. So, uh, Yeah, I remember that feeling of math being comforting. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, uh, you can hear my accent. So I went to college when the Soviet Union was falling apart. Oh, wow. It was... Um, well, messy time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you could still solve problems and they came out, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, 
so um this is this kind of the model you you would like to continue because it works well telling stories making their own building things like you did with books I think so. I mean, at least at the age that they're at, and my kids are seven, six, and four, and I, I, I do want to keep a fun element into it. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, as much as I can, just trying to figure out ways to do problem solving, even if we're in the grocery store, and just and have ways to incorporate the math so they can see that it's not a subject you put away um, and then bring out at a certain hour of the day. Um, so any, any, you know, that's why I've been enjoying reading the math blogs and I'm enjoying, and, and hopefully this um, will also be something where I can just get ideas for how you can do problem solving in a fun, creative way um, and keep their attention. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, this is kind of my hope for this course, that you'll take these problems and change them to you, for your kids. Yeah. So yeah. they can play with the problems, they can tell their own stories. That would be they, great. They can just start there. So this week, uh, we are planning for it. Okay. Have you seen the planning thread on the forum? You know, I haven't yet. No. Holidays. No. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So sometimes uh, before Sunday or so, okay. we have this planning thread on the forum. It's okay. on, uh, you know, where you answered the four questions. Mm-hmm. So go go there on the side. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a link to our forum, to the course forum. MPS okay. MOOC 13. Okay. And that's where uh, that's where the assignments are and some other things. Okay. Okay. Great. So so uh so just the uh, short plans on how how to change the problems. Okay. Okay, and next week play with the kids. Great. That's, I'm excited. That'll be fun. <laughs> I'm excited too. And um another um question that I have Mm-hmm. So, what do you hope uh, to learn in this course? We're learning here. So, what are your hopes personally? Yeah, um, just I, I'd like to learn a little bit more. You know, I'm, I've been excited too, just reading about the different people that have um, joined. And so, I kind of want to just get maybe a, a larger network of people where we can bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, I think that's one outcome I want and, and just, and maybe just feeling a little bit more confident that I can teach my kids math and be able to, um, you know, just see ideas out there and, and the planning and just realize that, yes, this is something that I can accomplish. So I'd like to. Okay. So- so uh, for networking especially, I'd like to encourage you to post questions on that forum, on, okay. on the course forum, because, yeah, we have fascinating people in the group, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Like you. So, <laughs> but uh, we have um, a, a good group of people and everybody's interested, everybody wants to do it, so uh, it's wonderful, uh, it's a good opportunity, and this forum will be open past the course so we okay. can we can keep using it great okay so post things questions ideas and it's a question and answer format which okay. i think is a good format to exchange um well ideas and everything so okay great. okay so um do you have any questions for me where now we're speaking uh about the course or anything really uh, so I guess as far as your hopes from the course, I, I know you guys are planning to write a book and, and what's kind of your hope? Uh, what what do you plan to do with the results, I guess? Okay. Well, the book is one thing and uh, that's kind of self-explanatory. So mm-hmm. that's one reason we want people's stories. Um, yeah. I am involved with mass circles and mass clubs. And okay. one of the big ongoing discussion is how do we help more people start clubs? 
Okay. So one of the goals is for people to maybe invite their friends to play with them. Okay. If uh, or start little groups or just try things with kids, but get more confidence that they can invite friends next time. Right. Right. So that's one of the hopes uh, to start a bunch of math clubs. <laughs> wow, that's great. And even if it's just for a few weeks, I mean, yeah. it, it it makes a big difference for, for kids to see their friends play with them. Yeah. And so, and it, it's... Uh, it's not something like, okay, let's get a university, let's get a tw 20, 30, 50 people together, let's get a group going. It's not like this, it's just, it's more casual. Right. So, um, it's parents having mass play dates. Yeah. <laughs> with their kids. Yeah. So, so, that's my hope to have more of those casual clubs around. And another big thing is, um, I, I am a researcher and I, I'm very interested in advanced mathematics for younger children in particular. Okay. And that involves modification. It involves changing things. Yeah. So we want to do a study next. We are planning on studying calculus for young kids, for oh, five-year-olds, wow. for six-year-olds. Wow. <laughs> so <That's> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I love your reaction. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, we have uh, some materials for algebra for young children. Uh -huh. So we, that, that's our previous book. Um, but uh, and it's it was all about modification. But we we are we want to have this online forums and and books and everything. And this is a pilot, basically. How do mm -hmm. people modify things? What yeah. is it we need to do to get people started? Yeah, yeah. So that's where that's the citizen science part of it, the research. Yeah, well, no, that's fun. I, I've actually been thinking about, you know, our local library has the book clubs for kids and the activities for kids, but it would be great to have, you know, math game night, you know, because you know, we do that with the kids. We play war and we play different games with our and they don't really realize it or, you know, they do, but it's just as fun right. and it'd be great to kind of have a larger group to do that with. So, um, so um, maybe you can approach the library for, for, for a game night. Yeah, absolutely. I think they would, you know, or even my neighborhood. I know we do game nights with the folks in my neighborhood too. So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. This is actually a format that's very easy to organize. Okay. Because everybody brings a game. And okay. people play, and that's it. Right. It's no preparation, you know, because you already play in the game, supposedly, right. so someone knows how. And there is no stress of any sort. People just come together and play, have some snacks, that's it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so I, I'd like to see this happen, and um, I... Um, maybe you can do something like yeah. that. And if you need any help of any sort, uh, this is a good network forming. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any uh, other questions about the course or ideas? No, I think that's I think that's it for right now. So yeah. Okay, but you know where we live, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so uh, Skype is here. Um, we added, I think, and uh, the email and the course okay. forum, of course, that's the main thing. Great. Okay, Perfect. thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.